and welcome to another Top Doctors Online interview where we speak with one of our leading specialists. Today we're very privileged to be joined by internationally renowned plastic surgeon Dr. Jordi Mir, who has his own private practice based in Barcelona, to hear his expert insight on breast augmentation surgery. So welcome Dr. Mir, thank you very much for joining us today. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your background or your areas of expertise? Hello, big pleasure. Um, I am Jordi Mir, I am a plastic surgeon in Barcelona, Spain, and have uh, around 20 years of experience. Um, I did um, all my career in Spain, and um, my super specialization in, in liposuction and in breast surgery in the United States and in Colombia. It's a big pleasure being here with you. Thank you very much. We're delighted to have you with us. So as I mentioned, we're going to talk about breast augmentation surgery today, a very popular type of procedure. So to start off, Dr. Mir, when is actually the best time to undergo breast augmentation surgery? Well, if we are talking about uh, which is the best period of the year to do it, well, any time, it's a good time for this surgery. It's a quite quick recovery surgery. But if we are talking about for the patient when it's better to do it, the better the better time to do it is when the patient has enough time for the recovery. You need around five, seven days to do normal life. So you need this time. Okay, thank you very much. So for people who are listening or watching at home, they're considering breast augmentation surgery. What are the most important things that they should be aware of before going ahead with this type of surgery? And how do you advise patients about their suitability and their results that they should expect? Well, there are many important things. One is to have a good information about the procedure. Another important thing, especially, well, in all the world, but especially in Europe and in Spain, is to look for a plastic surgeon, right? In Spain, for example, in any country in Spain, you can go to Secret, to Spanish Society of Plastic Surgery, and there you see all the 1,200 plastic surgeons that are there in the country. Um, another important thing is in what clinic, in what hospital is going to do the operation, right? It, may, it must have all the guarantees and as much safety as possible. Um, another important thing is what implant is the plastic surgeon going to use? Um, I think that there are like three top trademarks in the world that are maybe the most safe, safe, safest ones. And one of the three is the ones that um, I use. And also a very important thing is ask about the complications. What complications can happen in this surgery? And if they occur, what is the plastic surgeon going to do, right? There are some important things. There are patients that are not um, good candidates for this surgery. One is usually a patient that is not an adult, under 18 years old, right? unless she has a lot of asymmetry, the best thing to do is to wait. Another thing is the patient that is during a massive weight loss procedure process, right? Um, and another uh, bad candidate is when there are some kind of rheumatologic diseases that make um, not recommendable this kind of surgery. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mir. Um, so let's move on to talk about some of the different techniques that are used in this type of surgery. So one being fat transfer and another implants. When is one technique more beneficial than the other and how should patients make this decision? Um, well, there are some uh, factors that we have to see before. One is the width of the pocket of the subpectoral pocket or the superficial pocket where it's going to where we're going to put the implant. Another thing is the compliance of the skin, what elasticity has the skin of the patient. And another one is the desire of the patient. Related to this, we can do either an implant or either uh, fat grafting. Um, fat grafting is good when the desire is a good option when the desire is on a small breast and when, and when the patient doesn't want to have an implant and she has fat, what nearly always happens that you can find fat, right? But it has the problem that usually it needs two procedures because of the reabsorption of the fat. The implants have the advantage that there is no reabsorption, it's very predictable, 
and that you can reach more um, fullness of the upper pole and, and um, the profile of the breast augmentation is, is usually bigger, right? Um, but it depends on these factors. And also there is a third option that is quite used, that is the hybrid augmentation, when you do a breast implant and fat grafting at the same time. Why? Because you want uh, um, a important fullness of the upper pole, but the patient is very thin and you want to put some fat in the cleavage in order that, that it seems natural and that you don't see the implants. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mir. So a lot to consider there. So moving on to the post-operative period, how long do patients actually need to get back to normal life after a breast augmentation? And what is this recovery period like? Well, usually um, the recovery period is around four or five days. Um, in our team, we prefer to do it with one night in the hospital. And you can do normal life in four or five days, sport in three, four weeks, more or less. Okay. And um, so the final question is about the final results. When are the final results of a breast augmentation surgery actually visible? And how long do these results last? Um, well, the final results are six months, uh, although after the first month, the patient will, will see the 90% of the results. She will, she will see okay herself, right? Um, this surgery has a low rate of complications, around 1%, so the, the normal rate for a re-surgery around your life should be 1%, but the truth is that is around 20, 25%, because uh, women every, let's say, 15 years have a big change, like after having children or menopausia. So this makes that the breast changes, it falls, and then usually many women want to be again with the breast they had and they go for a, a second surgery. Right? Thank you so much, Dr. Mir, for sharing all of your expertise and insight on breast augmentation. I'm sure it's been really, really helpful for anybody who's considering this type of surgery. I'd just like to remind anyone who wishes to schedule an appointment with Dr. Mir that they can do so by visiting his top doctor's profile. Delighted to have spoken to you today, Dr. Mir. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks a lot.